At National Instruments, we provide high-performance RF and wireless test products. We are redefining RF and microwave instrumentation. To learn more about RF and microwave instrumentation, please visit www.ni.com slash redefine. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of WDD's Hotspot, brought to you by National Instruments. Raycon has announced the extension of its product offering to include the RIT 2016C model temperature control crystal oscillator, which minimizes power consumption in portable devices to extend the battery life. Operating at a 1.2 supply voltage, the RIT 2016C even has additional benefits of the enable disable mode to deliver better power management. It is ideally suited for smart meters, P&D, smartphones, tablets, GPS, and fitness watches when low power consumption and high stability are key features. If you want to know more information, visit www.raycon.com. The debris orbiting Earth is accumulating and the mission to clean it up is crucial for the space industry. So the Swiss company EPFL is developing a new method known as the Clean Space One project to launch satellites weighing up to 250 kilograms or 551 pounds to help with the space mess. Clean Space One is the three-phase process, which includes launching a satellite that will grab pieces of space junk and then thrust them into the atmosphere while they will burn up. That sounds pretty cool, actually. Enersys has announced that it has reached a deal to buy Spokane, Washington-based Purecell Systems for $115 million. Purecell designs, manufactures, and markets thermally managed electronic equipment and battery cabinet enclosures for telecommunication, broadband, utility, rail, and military uses. Enersys states that Purecell's products and services are a natural extension of its own offerings for the stored energy market. And then finally, a team of researchers in Singapore have demonstrated how conductive nanofilaments and amorphous titanium dioxide thin films could be utilized for resistive switching device applications. The evidence of high density and uniformly distributed nanofilaments implies that high density memory cells could be made using such oxide thin films, which is promising for future applications. Well, that's all for this week. Be sure to check out more wireless news at wirelessdesignmag.com and be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. For WDD, I'm Megan Zimba, and I'll see you next time in the hotspot.